Hi, and welcome to audiotouch.com. My name's Mo Volans, and in this series of screencasts, we're concentrating on tips and tricks for routing in Reason and Record. Now, I'm using Reason uh, 5 and Record 1.5 for these, so you'll probably need these new versions to follow some of the techniques that I'm using. Before we get into anything that's really fun or glamorous about the um, application, we're going to be um, concentrating on the basics, the things that you really need uh, to get ahead with your, your production. And I tend to use things that my students ask me a lot, my one-to-one -one students. And when they're using Reason, a lot of them want to use it as a rewire application, um, either as an expander uh, for extra instruments. Obviously, there's a lot of instruments now in, in Reason 5. Um, or they may have mixed or created a project in Reason or Record, and they want to break it out into another DAW, such as Cubase or Logic. Now, if you're not aware of Rewire, it's a protocol that's designed by Propelheads who make uh, Reason, and it's for transferring information such as audio data um, and MIDI data and sync information between applications. What this means is that we can pass the audio from Reason to um, any DAW that we like. The trick is here that we're going to be using uh, Reason in Rewire Slave Mode. Now you can see up here in the hardware interface, it's currently in Rewire Slave Mode. And this is because I've opened Logic first and Reason afterwards. In that order, you'll have your master program and Reason as your slave. So any application that you open first becomes the master, and any subsequent application that you open is then a slave. You can actually have more than one, so you can run several applications at once if your computer can handle it into your DAW. Now, I've already got Logic open, and you can see it's just a blank project, and you'll not hear any sound. Uh, we've just got one audio track in our mixer. Just a very basic project. And I'll fold that away for the minute. And we'll go back to Reason. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to set up an instrument. And I'm actually going to use a mixer. So we'll just use a standard 14 into 2. And I'll create a subtractor. I'll do it over here so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And currently, you won't hear anything. Um, in the preferences in Reason, just bring those up. Um, I'm actually going to untick my keyboard. This is because I'm actually going to activate the subtractor and trigger the subtractor from Logic, and we don't want it triggering twice. You'll get like an aliasing and ghosting sound as the sound is triggered in both Reason and Logic. So turning that off is quite important when you're using this setup. So I'll just go back to Logic. And the first thing we want to do is set up the audio so some audio can get into uh, Logic from Reason. And this is the first rewire setup. We press plus here in the mixer. And you can see that an auxiliary channel strip window opens up. Um, we want it to be stereo. And we change the input to reason. And rewire mix left and right. And then we create it. And there it is. So now we've got that set up. Um, our audio is ready to be streamed. And I'm going to fold this away again. And we'll go back to reason. And just to show you, I'll load up a, an Octorex with uh, the default loop set in, and we'll just run it. And you can now hear that. Before, we couldn't. Um, if I go back to Logic and press play. You can see that we're actually getting audio from Reason into our auxiliary channel strip we just created. Now, if I flip the rack, we can see that I've got a mastering combi here coming out of the mixer. And the output of this mastering combi is going into audio output one and two, and they're now green. That one and two that we activated in Logic, this input one and two here in Reason, one and two, in fact, it's called Mix, but it is one, two, the next one's three and four, is this one and two here. So there's an invisible wire from this section to this channel, this auxiliary strip in Logic. And that's the job that Rewire is doing. It's that invisible connection between the two applications. So now we can hear audio. In exactly the same way as we would in Logic. 
One thing to notice here is if you've got your transport open, as we have here, and you can see the CPU section is completely blank. Now that's because any CPU is now taken care of in Logic. So your master rewire program uh, will show you the CPU usage of all applications connected. So this CPU usage we can see here is actually reason ticking away in the background. Next thing we've got to do is trigger the um, subtractor. And to do this, we need to create a MIDI track uh, that's a rewire MIDI track. So if we press plus here in Logic, we get our standard um, creation uh, window and we can create a, an audio track, a software synthesizer, tra software instrument track, which would be um, a soft synth or a sampler, any plugin that you're using within Logic. And then you've got external MIDI. Now we use external MIDI for any MIDI that is leaving Logic. So that's not just leaving our computer. I mean, you would use it for hardware synthesizers, drum machines, etc., etc. But any MIDI that actually leaves the confines of Logic's environment. So going to another application, and in this case, Reason, we use external MIDI. So this is the option you want. And leave open library ticked, and you'll see why in a second. And there we go. We've got our new track and it defaults to Grand Piano every time on a general MIDI device. We obviously don't want that. You can see that the media library has opened up as we instructed it to. But if it hasn't, and if you don't tick that and you want to access it again, you'd simply click up here and whatever window you're on, whatever tab you're on, you go to library and then to reason. And we want to select subtractor. And you can see this is basically a representation of our rack in reason. And you can see Subtractor 1, but if you renamed it, so back to a reason, if we name this scribble strip here, um, Mo's Synth, and then go back to Logic, you can see it's named it Mo's Synth. So there's a constant communication between the two applications. So with it selected, we can now close our media library. And that's just me playing the MIDI keyboard and you can hear the bass guitar patch that's loaded up in the subtractor. We can go back and we can change it to a pad or whatever, and go back to Logic. And now we've got MIDI leaving Logic via Rewire to Reason, triggering, and you can see the note on. You can switch back to Reason and still trigger it. You can see our note on here. So now you should be able to record your MIDI into Logic just as you do with any other soft synth. So we can give that a go now. And you can see it's recorded it just as it would with any other MIDI signal in Logic. And you can edit that in exactly the same way. And you're totally freed from Reason sequencer now. But if you do have a project in Reason, it can be routed to the mixer channels in exactly the same way. You can actually keep going. So if you wanted to select and create more um, rewire channels, you just go input Reason 3 and 4. And there's a second one. So we could call this mix. And what I tend to do is have your main Reason output through this mix and then any other individual sound you want to process in Logic going through further rewire channels. So I'm going to put uh, the rewire, the Rex, Octo Rex loop through here. So we'll call this Octo Rex and we'll go back to Reason. And at the minute our Octo Rex with this uh, simple drum loop, the default drum loop is going straight to channels one and two, but we can break that routing and put it through three and four of the hardware interface. Now that will go directly to three and four in Logic that we just created. So you can see we've got our drum loop coming through here and we've got our mix, which is our pad coming through here. So if you're gonna add effects to uh, using the mixing desk in Reason, you could keep it going through mix one and two and you could keep mixing things throughout the mixing desk here and then feed individual instruments uh, and individual outputs of instruments, say the slice one and two from this Octorex into further uh, rewire channels. And you can just keep going like that and you should find that um, 
this these 16 here are pretty ample but if you want more you can click more audio and have up to 64 and that really is quite an astounding amount of streams going from reason to any other daw so hopefully you found this useful and you can use it in your projects and uh, hopefully uh, you'll get creative with it and if you've got any comments or suggestions for further tutorials on reason or any other subject uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment cheers <laughs>